boy, you do your swimmies? Good boy. Look at you, getting in that water all by yourself. What are you gonna do, you gonna turn around? Eat that leaf? Yeah, get that leaf. Probably get another one too, right? Oh, there goes your butt. There goes your butt, lift your butt up. Trouble, you're gonna sink. You're gonna sink, bud, you got it? You good? So proud. Good boy. Look at you just having the time of your life. What a good little swimmer. Okay, how are we gonna handle that obstacle? Good job, Turbo. Good job, baby. Good boy. You gonna get out the deep end? Good boy, Turbo. Good swim. That was so good. Good swim, Turbo. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Good boy. Yep, and now, time to get Toby. Good way to celebrate. You got your ice cube? You like your ice cubes, Turbo? Oh, he loves ice cubes. Anytime you open this drawer to get an ice cube, he immediately comes over, sits by that door very politely, and waits for his ice. And he loves water, too. He also just started to tear up that rug. Oh, and Toby's water bowl might be his favorite thing. You need to leave Turbo. No, no, Turbo. Okay, I suppose I should do something about that, shouldn't I? I swear, he finds everything. Absolutely everything. No, 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 no. Like that movie, The Langoliers, remember that thing? The angry meatballs that flo flew around and just ate everything in sight? That's my puppy. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great, just, you know, doing the puppyhood thing. It is still extremely hot outside. It's just the next morning from the last video I did, Wednesday's video, so this heat spell should pass. All I'm doing right now is watering. You can tell they're looking kind of thirsty, aren't they? They really shouldn't be this thirsty, but they are. So I'm gonna go outside, check the drips. And do I take you with me? Let's see how fast the camera fogs up. If it fogs up quickly, then why can't I get out of my house? Here we go. I don't know what that was about. You're gonna go? You're supposed to sit. You're supposed to turbo. To hey, 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 hey. These steps, the bigger he gets, the more he just kind of is doing his own thing. We've been at like, hyperdrive training lately, meaning there are some days where he's always on a leash and always by my side because he's under the impression that listening is optional. Whoa. Okay, it's gone. I just saw a huge bullfrog hop out from under there and went over there and then it jumped face first into the soil bucket over there. I'm gonna start off, just give some supplemental, what happened here? Some supplemental watering for this area right here. Okay, well, there's the fog. Took it a minute. Or is that the light? What's happening there? Do you guys see that? What's going on? You might want to move. You're going to get wet. Okay. I'm going to defog and figure out whatever's going on here and spend some time watering. We'll pick up this evening or tomorrow when it's cooled off. Jeez, they're thirsty. Hey, pumpkin. What you doing, baby girl? Do you want to come in? Do you want to come in, pumpkin? He's asleep. Well, Okay, he just woke up. He's kind of asleep. You gonna come in, Pumpkin? No? You don't want to? Okay, bye, Pumpkin. Very cautious with the puppy. Rightfully so. He's very chaotic. Oh, and Charlie's here too. Hey, Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? I haven't seen you in a while. Well, I see him every day. Y'all haven't seen him in a while. I think someday you two are gonna be friends. I'm hoping. Turbo set? Yeah. Don't focus on the kitty too much. And I think he has finally gotten too big to squeeze through that cat door. So maybe I could start leaving it open. I'm not sure. Just gonna move forward cautiously with that one. It's amazing how quickly they grow. And it's the next day. I spent a lot of time yesterday doing some watering. Well, by a lot of time, like two and a half hours. But it was mostly just moving that sprinkler thing around and did a good amount of hand watering. You want to make sure things are nice and hydrated before the sun hits them when it's going to be hot outside. Only got up to like, I shouldn't say only. Got up to 99.1 according to my sensor that I have out there on the table. And it was like 70% humidity. So this is pretty gross, but there was some relief to that. I was walking turbo last night and it got really windy and really dark and dropped about 30 degrees in a few minutes. We had a sprint back home. We had some massive storms roll through and it 
really cooled things off. It's only like 70 degrees outside right now. Very humid and you see the palm trees crooked. I have already spent much of my morning picking up fallen plants. There's still some stuff I need to do out there though. Look at those windows. Even the windows are sticky. Nice and humid out. Overall storm damage, it's nothing compared to how the past few storms have been. Things look pretty good. Just a few plants got knocked over. Not a big deal. There are some plants like the freckles croton that's, they're hanging down pretty weighted from all the water that they got in the high winds, but I think they should pop back up. Normally they do. I'm trying to use a calm, soft voice because I think he's gonna fall asleep. I think it might be a nap time. You gonna fall asleep? Nap time turbo? Yes, maybe, hopefully, I think it is. Even the big croton over here, it's all like, blech. All sad and upset. What I'm really surprised about, I don't understand this basket. How are these pansies still alive? Especially because I noticed a few days ago, okay, they don't look great, but they're still alive. A couple of days ago, I was like, man, these look really dry. And some of the other plants like this croton, their leaves were somewhat flaccid. That's how you know they need water. And uh, the big Alexander palm just around the corner of the Persian shield that was in the pot was all wilted down. And so I checked my drip timer and it was like blinking and it was just malfunctioning. I don't know what the problem was. I went ahead and pulled the timer off. There's like a piece you can remove. Cleaned out the metal contacts, reset it, and it's been working ever since. So, but the whole point though there is that it was 96 degrees. They didn't get watered. Of all the days for the drip irrigation to have a malfunction with the timer, what? It's only ever happens when it's really hot outside. So these pansies, which do not like heat, yeah, they don't look fantastic, but they're still going. And that's after having missed being watered on a day when it was piping hot outside. The Dark Knight Alyssum though, I'm very disappointed. I have this here and I have it on the front porch with my windmill pump pots and they just, no, they don't look nice. Snow Princess looking good. Dark Knight, meh. That's a shame because I love a purple alyssum. Purple lobularia is always pretty. You see this? Look at those pansy flowers. They should be dead. What's going on there? Missed a water and then the next day it was 99 degrees. Still, they're going strong. Well, I don't know about strong, but they're still going. Still doing their thing and trying their best. I need to do some cleanup over here. The wind did some damage on these colocasias. Got a little banana leaf snapped up there. Oh, and after all that, I remembered I never gave any updates on these windmill palm planters. Potted these up what? April? No, probably early May. Put some new guinea impatiens in here with the canary wing begonias, which are doing very, very well. They seem to hang and drift more than just a regular dragon's wing, but maybe that's just because the flowers that these have, it's just much more prolific, so they're dangling more. I did the Dark Knight Lobularia in the front, and it's just... No. This one over here gets some more light than the other one and it's flowering better, but still it's just nothing in comparison to the snow princess. The snow princess is what I put in these last year and they just grew and flowered and flowered and flowered. I had to keep them cut back because they got kind of messy, but that just eh, pathetic. They look better over here where they're not getting the same sun exposure. Here they just get morning sun and that's pretty much it, which the windmill palms are totally fine with. They've been growing very well over here. You can see, maybe not on this one. Yeah, right here. So this was a spear that was sitting in the center of the plant back in April when we had that random cold snap and that random snow. You can see right here, this is the line. This is the part that was exposed. This is the part that hadn't come up and out of the crown yet. So uh, all the growth above this leaf, which is an awful lot, lots of foliage there, that's all new. So these are growing well. Nice, big, healthy, stiff fronds. Everything over here is on drip and I've been using palm gain on them every other month and then doing a liquid palm fertilizer monthly as well. Windmill palms are not the fastest growers, so it helps to supplement them whenever you can. The New Guinea impatiens, they're doing pretty well. This one doesn't have quite as much growth on it as the other one does because this got set up onto drip last. I thought it had drip on it and the head that was in there was busted and it wasn't working quite, quite, wasn't working quite right. So that's why there's not as much growth down here with everything, but 
they're alive. This is the thing when I potted these up, I was talking about with the New Guinea impatience how they're plants that I just don't always have the best luck with. And I was thinking this because I was over babying them and not giving them anywhere near enough sun. Because impatients can actually take a lot more sun than I think we give them credit for. Just because they can be grown in shade doesn't mean that they should be. Uh, they can take a good amount of light. So, and they seem to be responding well to that. They're somewhat in between flowers right now, flowering. So these were heavily flushed out, I'd say sometime last week and they're putting up some more growth instead of flowering heavily, which is fine. They can take their time. The star of these containers though has to be those canary wing begonias. Aren't they just beautiful? I love the foliage, how that comes out that lighter green, almost yellow. Hence the name canary, right? We think yellow canaries, canary yellow. They do seem to age out more green and the leaves on them are a lot bigger than on a typical dragon's wing. I absolutely love these. I really want to use these in some hanging baskets next year. I think that that would be stunning. Absolutely beautiful to have the heavy flower show. All those pendulous, beautiful flowers dangling from up above. The hummingbirds would probably enjoy that too. They're good. Lots of growth out of the windmill palms. They've been growing really, really well this year. Like really well. Oh, and the foxtail palm. You all haven't seen that in a while. There it is. It's also been growing really well. I think it's put out three fronds. It has been very happy with this drip. There's a begonia sitting in there that I need to do something with. Uh, I did the drip line instead of drip heads and it's getting really nice, even coverage and it seems to be loving life. Here's it. well, yeah, the front landscape needs some work. I had all that lantana that I was going to put here, but then I got the puppy in front of the lantana. It was bad for them, so I gave all that lantana away, which was a lot. It was two flats of lantana, and now it still looks like this. It should be safe to plant this area up by now. The, an arborist came out. There used to be a huge Japanese maple here, a blood good, and it went on a random decline, and an arborist came out and said that it could be root wrap or it could be the specific disease that's soil borne, so to wait a few years before replanting the area, I wanted to be safe, so... So what I've done, it's been a few years and I'd say it sh should definitely be safe by now. There's a hosta that's there that's thriving, would be thriving more if the deer would stop chewing the tops off of it. I'm thinking probably gonna keep this spot simple. I'm gonna try and find some landscape roses and do a little drift in the front of each spot with just like a centerpiece behind and maybe some lambs here in the front because the deer, deer have just gotten, there's so, there's so many deer. There didn't used to be, I'm new to having to garden with deer, but to my understanding, they typically leave roses alone in the lamb's ear, and then I don't know what I'll have as a centerpiece on each side. I was thinking hydrangea standards because I love those, but I have hydrangea standards down over here, and guess what? Deer chewed them up, even though they're not supposed to. They did. I don't know why, because I thought that they were pretty deer resistant. My neighbors, there's hydrangeas everywhere. And patients and petunias and all kinds of things, but anything I've been popping out here, nope. Nope, the deer just chew it right up. So I gotta go with something that's deer resistant. Oh, and the boots, that's the last thing. These were, actually, I don't think I potted these up in a video. I'm not certain that I did, but I've had this tricolor sedum for a pretty long time. It does require some upkeep. They do put out growth that doesn't have variegation on it. Just pull that out. Not a big deal. I just want to put something simple in there since it's in a spot where I'm not going to have a drip line run to it. So it doesn't need much water. It's hardy, comes back every year. It's good enough. I like it. Pumpkins seem to be okay. Wasn't really too concerned about them anyways. Look at them, they're starting to color up. That yellow one back there, and then this one's green. Don't know what type they are, so should be a surprise. Okay, that's not supposed to be here. Wind blew that out of the pool. And this one, getting nice and yellow. I know I just updated these a few days ago on, or what was it, Wednesday's video, but they're growing so fast. Only a couple days and there's a lot more to say about them. I gotta do something though. You can see there's not much of a pathway there. And that's not safe, so I don't really know what to do. I'm afraid if I pull them, which is what I've been doing, if I pull them, that could damage the vine altogether, so I'm probably just gonna take my clippers in there and try and make more of a path. There is supposed to be at least a four foot wide pathway around the entire perimeter of the pool. That's just zoning regulations, at least it used to be. It's been a while since I've looked into any of that, but it used to be you had to have a four foot pathway all the way around the pool, and electrical all had to be 10 feet away, any entrances and exits from the home, windows, doors, everything, at least 10 feet away from the body of water. That's a St. Louis thing, which really sucks. Like talk about a way to cramp someone's artistic creativity because if, if it weren't for that, I've never talked about this before. If it weren't for those stupid rules, this pool 
would have been up against this wall that's back here. And that wall was going to be all boulders with an overhang and a waterfall. And then this all would have been shifted forward with a natural gradient. It would have looked more like a natural little lagoon. How beautiful would that have been? But no, we have stupid safety laws. Also the same reason why I didn't end up, I was going to put a pond over here. Don't know if anybody remembers that. There was going to be a very small pond put in this spot because I just missed having a pond. But window closer than 10 feet, electrical closer than 10 feet. Also, the, the, that electrical thing doesn't make sense to me because I see people put in ponds all the time with outlets right next to them. Maybe they've changed rules recently or maybe the body of water has to be a certain size. I don't know, but I was like, I don't, I'm just not gonna mess with it. This is fine, this is pretty. Need to prune that up. So that's what I need to do. You know, the this video comes out tomorrow, so it's not gonna be like a normal vlog where I vlog throughout the entire week. I am just need to tie up some odds and ends, do some pruning and some tidying. And we're already how far are we into this video? Nothing's really happened yet. It's still sort of just playing catch up and I spent my morning cleaning up storm damage. Gotta deal with that again. Can't believe that got blown over. There are five 40 pound bags of gravel in there and uh, three or four, no, there's four 25 pound weight plates. 300 pounds of weight in there, still blew over. Queen palms will not be going in these pots next year, which I wouldn't expect them to. They need to be potted up into something larger anyways, but it's been nice for the few weeks I've been able to have them in these pots without them blowing over. And before I even get started with pruning, it's, it's not a huge priority. The pruning, that's not a big deal. I do have some plants that badly need to repot, like this right here. This is a Pharaoh's mask, Colocasia here. And uh, I mean, look at it. This is just pathetic. The poor thing. The I think that it just doesn't like the potting media that I have it in. And it's outgrown this pot. So even if it did like it, it's time to bump it up a size into something bigger that it can spread its roots out in. I've been keeping this one in my pond, just sitting on top of another pot that's in the water so it wicks that moisture up. I have some wicking cord in here to be sure that even if the water level drops, that it has constant access to water because what I know about the pharaoh's mask is that they like things very moist and wet. They're a good candidate for keeping in a pond. Probably best to keep it in a pond or in a buggy situation. I need to bump that up and then I have this deflexum here that really needs to be bumped up too. I received this bare root and put it in a very small pot to get it going and then I put it in this pot about a month ago and it's already, I can tell from feeling it, it's already filled that pot out. So I need to bump that up does something even larger as well. I'm sorry about the lighting. There's going to be a lot of shadows. The sun is very strong and direct today. I'm bumping this up into, this is actually, it's just a hanging basket pot. And I think that this will work well for that plant. I want it in something that's fairly shallow because during the winter time, these will be on my shelves, my grow shelves. And there's not a ton of clearance. So I don't want to put it in anything too deep because then it won't be able to get that light. And I'm just using all purpose potting blend has some earthworm castings in it, some leaf litter, composted leaf litter. Specifically, there's some wood chips, perlite, sand, coconut, and peat because I've been blending together my coconut mix with all my leftover old peaty mixes. See, there are some roots coming out the bottom. I don't think they're out so far that it's going to do much damage to the plants pulling these out, but it is hard to say though. These are really, uh, I don't want to say they're weak plants, but my experience with them hasn't been that they're the most vigorous of growers. That's not bad. And I'll leave that wicking cord there. That's not going to hurt anything. The plants will be fine with having that in there. I do think it would be a good idea to pot these a little bit deeper to help keep those stems supported. That looked like it was too shallow. Let's try this again. Yeah, because I might want the soil right around there. And because they're such thirsty plants, I also want to make sure that if I need to flood this when I'm watering it, that I have that option. I just cannot stand when I overpot a plant, when I put too much soil in, and then when you water it, you know, it's just like a little drink, then a little drink, and then a little drink so that that water can flush through and not run over the sides. That drives me nuts. A little bit more soil. Also like the idea of having this in a more shallow container because with all that moisture these are going to want, there's also going to be more potential for rot during the cooler season and when these are inside and in the grow space. So I'll be able to keep that wicking cord in there, keep them nice and moist 
and hopefully not have this to a point where it's so saturated that it doesn't go well for the plant. When it's not warm, the moisture is something to be more careful with. And this is land and sea compost from Espoma. Really nice, rich, and organic. Going to lightly work that into the top of the soil. And then I think it would be a good idea to find some stakes because this plant has been flopping all over the place the whole time. And that makes me very nervous. I don't want this thing bouncing all over the place like that. Clearly it needs some support, right? Unfortunately, I don't have matching hangers for this, but these might work. No? Eh, I don't know. That doesn't feel very secure. It, that's okay, though. I just want this on here to help guide the plant up. I think that that's easier than staking it sometimes. So, won't be using this to lift the plant, but I do want it in here to create sort of a frame or a cage to help support it. There we go. That's more stable. Those are holding those in place. I had stakes ready to put in the pot, but I was like, I feel like these probably aren't going to cut it. It's because that soil is so shallow. Oh, I need to water this in. Don't want to forget to burp the soil, right? To give that a good flush through, get all the air pockets out and make sure that I don't need to put any more in. I probably could have put this up a little bit higher, couldn't I? Well, that's all right. This way I can give it nice heavy waterings when I need to. Is that a few flush throughs? So this is what I like to see. I usually like really sharp drainage. Sometimes I overdo it with the drainage and things drain too quickly. I like this speed. So it's able to pull up some, still drain out relatively quickly, but not so fast that I know that there isn't going to be any moisture held onto in this container. And I do think this could use just a little, a little bit more soil. Check the drainage from the bottom too. You know, if there's any plant where I probably don't need to worry about it not draining quickly enough, it's more than likely this one. But just to be safe, want to make sure that everything is the way it should be. Just top dress that with a little bit more soil and a little bit more compost too. Why not? Get that lightly blended in and this is done. Went ahead and added a couple clips just to secure those in place. Want those plants to be nice and stable so that they'll root in properly. They already got moved around and bumped around enough. And then I added some more holes to the bottom because when I lifted it up to bring it over here, thinking that the lighting would be better, it's only a little bit better, I noticed when I picked it up that it was so really heavy, so it's like, but this isn't draining well enough. Even though this particular plant does like a fairly moisture retentive blend, it doesn't need to be sitting in water that has no movement or oxygen flowing to it. When these are in a pond situation, that water is moving and circulating. Even if it's just minimal, there's oxygen in it. In a container, that's not going to be the case unless you have a pump moving the water around underneath it to keep oxygen in there. Without that oxygen, you get anaerobic buildup, anaerobic bacteria builds up and get fruit rot. Don't want that. So I popped a few more holes in the bottom just to make sure that it does drain well. I'll probably throw a few more in there. I have a drip head placed in here, and that's because I'm thinking I'm probably not going to put this back into the pond. The pond, it just, we can, okay. Try and get over this. There just isn't much light back here anymore. The pine trees and everything have grown up so much that it's really shaded, and I don't think it's going to get the light that it will need to grow properly. So I'm gonna keep it on drip. I'll get it plugged into the drip line that's over here. There's plenty of water pressure to support adding a few more plants to this area. I just need to keep an eye on the right spot because I also don't want to cook the plant either. It's just been repotted, so it should go into less light before it gets moved up into having like a lot of light. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to shock it. Probably tuck it right back in there. I think that'd be a good spot for it. Problem is, I can't find my quarter inch drip line. Spent a while searching through all my drip supplies and it's it's nowhere to be found. I've misplaced it, I don't know where it is. So for the time being, I'm just gonna let it hang out right here on the table. I've been doing that with another plant too. I repotted this caladium here, it's the Lindelani caladium. Love this plant, got it repotted. It was just in a little growers like two inch container. So it needed to get bumped up, but I wanted to give it some time to establish itself in the shade before moving it out into the light. Isn't that watering can adorable? I love it. I didn't plant this directly into the watering can because the shape of it is not going to be good for repotting. Those roots will fill out down here and it's going to be really hard to get the plant out from the top when the top's smaller than the bottom. Just dropped it in a four inch plastic nursery container and set it in there. It'd be nice if it fit a little bit more snug but that's okay, it still looks cute. With the caladiums, 
they have that dormancy period fall and winter time so i don't want that pot into something where i can't lift it back out when i move it to a cool storage by cool storage i mean i probably will go ahead and let it die back and dry out and toss it under my kitchen sink that's what i normally do with plants like these this has been potted up in this mix for i don't know a week and it's already starting to put out some new growth and the leaves have perked up it looks much 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 happier i mean that's just adorable got this from walgreens drilled a couple holes in the bottom throw a plant in it i love it they probably should have coated it with like a rust-oleum or something of the sorts but i didn't i didn't get around to it i didn't really feel like it a lot of watering can just to drill holes in it and to toss a plant into the top i'm not mad about it it looks cute found the drip line this quarter inch drip tube I got it off Amazon because the past few times I was at the hardware store, they were out of it. The quarter inch poly tubing, black, 0.25 outer diameter, 100 foot coil. This is quite possibly the worst tubing I've ever used in my life for drip irrigation. It's really, really rigid and stiff. Usually the quarter inch lines are more rubbery. This, I mean, that'll straight up kink. See that? That's not normal with quarter inch drip line. The ends, it's gonna be hard to show this, but the ends, when you cut them, they fray. Which, like I said, see if I can get in on that. See that? Which makes it difficult to get the pieces put together. Now, I don't know where, it, I had it already lose my adapter. Where'd that go? Oh, there it is. So this piece right here is supposed to connect down into this, and then that end connects into the half inch drip tubing. But I can't get it in there. I mean, I push it in, but it pops right back out because this tubing absolutely sucks. Still been using it because it'd be wasteful not to. I want to send it off into a landfill. I'll look into seeing if it's recyclable, but it's just, I consider this useless. It feels like it's a one year type tubing. I would imagine that after a winter, this is going to crack and fall apart. I'm not thrilled with it. Just a little mini rant there. I can't even use it. What a waste. Right now that doesn't matter. Cause like I said, I'm going to keep this on the table for a few days where it's going to get that shade and some protection from the elements. Things have been very, very, very windy here. That'll give it a chance to recover from being repotted. I really didn't disturb the roots very much in there, like hardly at all, but still I've just noticed this particular plant to be uh, kind of finicky. I don't know. I see people who grow these, the Pharaoh's mask, and uh, they are growing like weeds for them. But those are people who are growing them in a pond situation where there's a lot of nutrient in the water. That pond of mine over there, the bullfrogs have eaten just about every fish that are in there. I think I'm actually maybe going to drain that pond down and just get rid of it. Cause like I said, the plants aren't getting enough sun to even grow very well. And uh, if the fish are practically gone from the bullfrogs, then I'd, what's the point? You can't really see it. It takes up space. The only spot in my yard that really gets full sun anymore is like kind of the edge of the pool. I can't put a pond there. So if I'm not using it, there's no reason to be maintaining it and taking care of it. The plants that are still in there be fine. There's a mini cattail. I can put that in a pot that doesn't have any drainage or just has a tiny, tiny little drainage hole in it and a moisture, a similar situation to this, a boggy mix. This isn't quite a boggy mix, but you get what I'm saying, probably a wet soil that's going to hold on to wetness. The cattail will be fine. I can move to a spot where we'll get more sun. And then the other pot just has creeping Jenny and an, uh, an arum of some sort. I can't remember the variety. Again, plants that'll do okay potted. The arum I can move into the garden into a wet spot, and I think it would be quite happy if I were to do that. So that's probably what I'll do there. Oh, and by the way, this is what this is supposed to look like. They're wonky looking plants. That's the appeal to them. As these leaves mature, they get really heavy, striking veining on the outside and the leaves cut backwards. They look awesome. This leaf right here is starting to show up more than the others. Really neat looking plants. I wanna make sure to keep them around because they have gotten quite pricey. Wasn't pricey when I got it, but the cost of them has gone up drastically. So I wanna get this plant to take off. Still a few months of growing time left, hopefully that's going to do the trick. This isn't, I normally wouldn't go to all this trouble for any <laughs> colocasia. Most of them are pretty easy to grow, right? Keep them watered well, give them their fertilizers because they do like some nutrient, give them the right amount of light and they'll grow. This one, it hasn't been quite like that for me. But again, I think that's because I had it in a potting media that was fine for winter time in the growth space, but out here, 
they're just, it was nutrient void. And then that pond water is fairly nutrient void too because there aren't really many fish in there. So this should do the trick. I am slightly concerned that I spent way too much time on this plant. My apologies. Sometimes it's just fun to just keep talking about the stuff, the, all the things that are going through the mind and get feedback from people and here we are. Anyways, if any of y'all have experience with the Pharaoh's mask, comment down below, what are your experiences? It's a plant where I just get a mixed bag of what people are doing with them. Like I said, a lot of people, it's from people who have them in like their wet gardens or bog type gardens near their ponds and they're thriving, but then there are other people who are just growing them as a potted plant and they're doing well too. Let me know, because this is a plant that I haven't struggled with. I would say I just, I mean, I haven't done much with it. Haven't done much with it at all. When this came in the mail, I'm gonna wrap this up, I promise. When I got this last summer from Brian's Botanicals, it was basically dead. I ordered three of them. There are two in here, another one's planted underneath the Alexander palm. I'll show that to you in just a moment. But it, they were just like rotten and melted. They looked awful. They were like, maybe had this much root on them and this much stem left, all the foliage died off, which that happens. Especially with colocaceas when they get shipped, you know, they'll lose their leaves and throw a fit. Colocaceas and bananas, alocaceas, they can be finicky in that regard. But they just, I thought they were just going to die. So I'm happy that a year later I still have them, but they should be much, much, much bigger than this by now. So hopefully this is going to bump them into that direction. A lot of nice nutrients in there with that compost and it's out of that coconut blend, which I love a coconut blend. They think that they're fantastic, but this plant particularly, maybe that just, it wasn't for it. That wasn't its thing. Oh, here's the other one. I ordered three, y'all saw two, and here's the other one. This, I potted up with everything else when I got all the, what, begonias and heliconias and petunias down here and the Persian shield underneath this Alexander palm, and I put a drip head directly above its roots to make sure that it got a good amount of moisture. And it's been doing well, but still, I'm just not getting the growth out of them that I see from other people who have them in those pond type situations. It's gotta be a nutrient thing is what I'm thinking because the soil doesn't dry out for very long at all around this plant. Cause this, this is a very big palm tree. Takes a lot of water to keep this thing hydrated. So I don't treat it like one of those plants where I make sure to let a certain amount dry out in between waterings. It's, that would be too complicated. It has, I think six drip heads on it. They run for 10 minutes, three times a day. Takes a lot of water to keep this thing growing. And I actually think I've been going a little bit light on the water too. So uh, yeah, and you can even see like there's some discoloration in there, but that could be normal because these are supposed to be pretty funky looking. I don't know, it's a mystery. Look how many flowers have popped out of this bract on this ginger since Wednesday's video. And the, some of them are already dying off. That part is really unusual. The Flaming Torch, that's what this Hidichium is, a butterfly ginger, they normally hold onto their flowers for a long time, but it, they're going out very, very quickly. Usually I get like, I want to say at least two weeks out of these flowers. Well, I guess that may be what it is. Since had about a week down below, maybe I'll get a week up top, I don't know. This is their first year in this corner, so have to see. It could have something to do with the heat. It is very hot and toasty in this spot over here. And going through doing aphid checks on the crepe myrtle. This is the Natchez crepe myrtle. And these things, man, they get aphids and white fly and ants. The ants host those other pests, but they're just messy. It's a messy plant. I love a crepe myrtle, but this it's kind of high maintenance, right? Because you don't want to spray when it's a pollinator plant, but also just can't let those things go out of control. This is one of the few plants where if I don't do anything and just let those pesky insects have their way with it, then they end up taking over the entire area and get that sooty black mold. It's not actually mold, but that sooty mold on everything, which is actually the excrement from the white flies and the aphids and everything. It's, I don't know. I'm thinking about getting rid of it. I love this plant, but it's just such a hassle of a plant to have around this time of year when it starts to flower. It's fine until it starts to flower. I don't normally have any issues with it. Oh, look at you. Blending in, trying to trick people into thinking you're a leaf. It worked. Barely even saw you. That's really neither here nor there. None of this is anywhere. So the rest of the plants that I need to repot are actually oleanders. I have three or four 
of the, what are they called? Austin Pretty Limits, I believe is what they're called. Let me go look. Yeah, Austin Pretty Limits. This is an oleander variety from Proven Winners. I ordered four of these in the springtime and they came so small. They're like this big. They're 17 or $18 a piece. I mean, I know you pay a price when you order directly from Proven Winners, but that was a bit much. I was hoping for bigger plants. I need to grow them out and well, there's a lot of stuff that got knocked over here last night. Anyways, I need to grow them out. I have all my oleander, anything that's like super, super toxic. I moved to my driveway because it's the puppy, right? They're really hard to keep watered in the driveway. My hose doesn't reach the driveway, so I've been doing it by hand and it's really hot over there. I would like to get those repotted. Can't do it right now. I'll explain why. But I want to get those repotted and just set up this area as like the killer plant zone. So I've ordered some portable fence panels, the kind that just stake into the ground to run right here and then to put over right here and then I'll put something up along the front might just use like big pots or something like that so that he can't jump up there and use this as the spot for my oleander so I have my big Malibu sunset or Malibu sunrise I can't remember the name of it oleander and then I have four of these tiny little awesome pretty limits that need to get bumped up into larger containers I'll probably move them up into three gallon pots which is a big step up, but there's still time for them to go ahead and get rooted out into those containers, put their roots down and establish themselves before it gets too cool. And come next year, I think the puppy's gonna be hopefully out of the bite everything in sight phase that he's in. He's already kind of coming out of that as it is. But, you know, the puppy teeth are gonna fall out and then the adult teeth come in and it's, you know, got several months of teething going on. So just to be safe, I wanna zone up here to get those plants repotted, established, and. But I can't do that right now because I don't have the fence panels yet to put them up here and I don't want to repot these plants and put them back into the driveway where it's just an oven and they will cook over there. So it's just going to have to wait and that's fine. The panels should be here I think in a day or two. I'm gonna get that done next week. I forgot about this area in the last garden tour. I had filled this spot with seeds, hundreds of seeds, sunflowers, zinnias, and cosmos. And uh, well, you can see how that went. The squirrels and the rabbits just picked everything off. I looked into getting some wire domes to put over the area when I seed it, but they're ground squirrels. So they'll just dig right underneath it. And I don't know, those things are kind of pricey. What do you guys do to help keep the pests away from your seedlings? What I should probably do is start them inside, get them bigger and try them out here. Cause what a waste. There were so many seeds over here. I can still see there are some things coming up, but not like there should be. Not even close. So here we are, just kind of hit and pause. Got to wait for some stuff to come in the mail. I have some new lighting coming. It's going to go around one of the, underneath the Washingtonia palm. When the queen palm that's over there fell, last night it broke the spotlight that goes up there. So I have a new one coming that's supposed to be nice and bright, but can't say for sure. Oh, yeah, I always save those for Tucker because I like to play with them. That's just habit. I can't do that. Tucker was old enough to understand that if you give him something to chew on, that's all right, but he wasn't allowed to break the things off the plants himself. Not turbo. That would be very confusing to him. Oh, and the same thing happened over here. I put tons of seeds in here. They all just got gobbled up by the ground squirrels. Ate every single one of them. I don't think there's anything in here. I thought that maybe there were some, but I'm pretty sure it's just weeds. I kind of let the weeds go because I thought maybe they were the zinnias, but they're big enough now that... That's probably not the case. So now I just have a lot of weeds to take care of and get out of here. All right, hope everybody's doing well. I know, not the most normal type of vlogs because I spent most of my morning cleaning up plants that had fallen over and storm damagey type stuff. And we've already been through all that. Y'all have watched me clean up the storm damage. There's no need to do that again. And I'm still kind of trying to get back into the swing of things. So hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. It's supposed to be beautiful all next week i might go to a nursery i think that that would be fun i want to try and find some landscape roses to put out in the front yard gonna need a lot of them though that's hard to find this time of year but don't know unless you look right i need to that's that should that needs to be moved forward look at this how did i miss that spend all kinds of time weeding and then something like that look how big this is Seriously, how did I not notice? It's fine, not a big deal, it happens. Like I said, comment down below if you have any tips, tricks, suggestions with those Pharaoh's masks or just some 
fun tips, tricks, and suggestions you have for growing plants in general. Love talking to everybody. I don't have the slightest idea what the hell I'm gonna call a vlog. How am I gonna title this? What is the title of this video going to be? Watch me ramble and not do much for a little while? That might do it. Anyways, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.